Hello and welcome to Y'all Monitor Brief. It's April 30th. I'm Kristen Tallman. Today's main segment is a conversation with All Monitor's Israeli Pulse lead, Rina Bassist, on how an Israel-Hamas ceasefire deal could look. But first, let's get you caught up in the headlines. An Abu Dhabi-backed group planning to take over Britain's Telegraph Media Group said Tuesday it will withdraw and sell on the business after the UK government moved to block the deal. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken headed Tuesday to Jordan, where he will discuss ways to boost aid deliveries into Gaza and quietly thank the kingdom for its help during recent Iran-Israel clashes. Later in the day, Blinken will head to Israel, where he will discuss the latest negotiations aimed at securing a temporary ceasefire and a release of hostages. Hamas was studying Tuesday Israel's offer of a 40-day truce in the war in the Gaza Strip, in exchange for a release of scores of hostages held since the Palestinian militants group's October 7th attacks. LGBTQ Iraqis fear dark days ahead after the Iraqi parliament passed an anti-gay bill on Saturday criminalizing same-sex relations, carrying sentences of 10 to 15 years in prison. The United States said Monday it opposed the International Criminal Court ICC investigations into Israel's conduct in Gaza amid reports that Israeli officials fear the Hague-based tribunal could soon issue arrest warrants. And on Tuesday, the International Court of Justice ruled not to grant provisional measures requested by Nicaragua in its case against Germany over Berlin's support for Israel's war in the Gaza Strip. Now, on to the main segment. Hi, Rena. Welcome to the Yom Monitor Brief. Hello, Kristen. Happy to be here. So, There's been reporting from yourself as well as others that an Israel-Hamas ceasefire deal could be imminent as the world waits for Hamas to respond to the latest proposal. Can you walk us through what a ceasefire deal would look like and sort of what the reporting is thus far? Yeah, so we have to be, of course, careful because uh, none of the details uh, are official. Israel did not acknowledge any of the of the details that were published in the past uh, one day or two about uh, an imminent proposal. Uh, we do know uh, that what is on the line for the moment is the release of uh, 33 hostages. We are talking about women, about female soldiers about elderly hostages and about hostages that are either ill or that suffer from some injury and by ill include also those uh, suffering from mental illness. So uh, Hamas would be ready if they accept this deal to release these 33 uh, hostages. In exchange, Israel will do several things. First of all, Israel will uh, uh, cease fire. Uh, we're not sure exactly about uh, the length of that period. We know that uh, the original proposal was for a six weeks delay in fighting, uh, but since uh, Hamas said that it cannot release 40 hostages because it claims it doesn't know where they are, or perhaps there are no 40 hostages alive in this category, and we are talking only about 33. So the length of the that period of the ceasefire could be shorter, either one day for each, for each hostage released, in that case it's 33 days, or as long as 40 days. That's for the moment the period of time we are talking about. Israel would also agree to release uh, several hundreds of Palestinian prisoners incarcerated in Israel. Uh, what we call security prisoners. So it's Palestinians that were most of them convicted for uh, security offenses. And uh, in this uh, case, we will be talking also about Palestinian prisoners uh, convicted for uh, murder or other very serious offenses, Uh, though though there is no list for the moment. And we don't know if the list would be addressed by uh, Hamas, as they would have liked it to be, or if Israel would have any influence on on that list of the several hundreds, perhaps as, as, as many as 900 Palestinian prisoners that are going to be uh, released. Israel, uh, apart from from, uh, six six weeks or or, or 30 to 40 days of of, uh, ceasefire, uh, would also be obligated to let Palestinians, displaced Palestinians, those who are now in the south of uh, of the Gaza Strip, to return if they want to to the north of the Gaza Strip. This means, in concrete terms, Uh, that Israel would have to seize the control over 
a stretch of land uh, which is separating uh, both parts to seize control, to let the Egyptians control this, this uh, path of land. Uh, and it will be the Egyptians who would inspect those Palestinians who want to return to their homes, who want to travel from the uh, south of the uh, Gaza Strip to the north, they will be the ones inspecting them to make sure, of course, that we are not talking about Hamas uh, asylums uh, trying just to get back into the fighting near the border uh, with Israel. And then there is, uh, of course, the issue of ending the fighting. Now, this would not be part of the first this first phase of the deal the one including the release of hostages, of prisoners, and of, of letting uh, Palestinians return to the north. This would be part of what is called a second phase. Israel so far objected to any such demands of stopping the, fi the, the fighting completely. So what we are talking about, so it seems, is some sort of a little bit of a vague formula where Israel would express its willingness in the, this second phase to discuss ways of bringing back quiet or calm for the long run. Uh, something that both Israel and Hamas could live with. And for the moment, from what we hear, it seems that Hamas might be willing uh, to take such an offer, even though Israel would not make the promise or the pledge to end completely the war. Mm, okay, so it's sort of this multi-pronged, multi-step deal, potentially, you know, as you said, it's not that these statements have been confirmed, but this has been reported in different parts of it have been released in sort of this three phase. You know, my first imminent question is on Monday, it really seemed like a deal might be close in the works. And now where we're, when we're talking today on Tuesday, does it seem like the proposal is just as close to being met? Or, you know, what's what's the mood on on sort of how quickly this could potentially take place? Of course, it's it's hard. It's hard to tell. And uh, it's true that on Monday, most of the uh, press in Israel reported that a deal was imminent. And we were expecting, in fact, a delegation, a negotiating delegation, not the, the top the top officials, but a mid-range uh, negotiating team, Israeli team, to travel to Cairo to continue negotiations with the Egyptians until we receive the response from Hamas. Obviously, we are now uh, Tuesday afternoon and the delegation did not uh, go. So what uh, seems to be transparent is that Prime Minister Netanyahu decided that the uh, Israeli negotiation team will only travel to Egypt after Hamas officially delivers its response. And we know that the process of uh, Hamas uh, making decisions is a very complicated one because at the end of the, of the line, there is only one person deciding, and this is Yahya Sinwar, who is somewhere in one of the tunnels uh, under Khan Yunes or under Rafah, we don't know. And he depends, of course, on, on people uh, reaching him in some way uh, to communicate to him all the details of the proposal and to take back his own response, and this could take time. So instead of talking about an imminent deal today, on Tuesday, we're now talking about an Israeli team perhaps traveling to Cairo tomorrow evening, Wednesday evening, if indeed Hamas by that time uh, will respond positively. Right. And I mean, you know, this is all to say last week there were some videos released of hostages, some extremely gut wrenching, and I imagine both relief but very tragic for the families. Talk a little bit about how these families are ramping up their appeals to the government or what they're sort of asking and if, if their demands um, are helping push this forward. Yeah, so of course, the, the, we saw two videos uh, last week. First of all, we had the video of first Goldberg Poland and uh, then the video of two hostages of Omri Miran and Kiss Siegel. And we have also seen, if you look at the Israeli society and uh, the families of the hostages and particularly the families of these hostages, um, what we saw is some sort of a change of, of strategy. Uh, if I may call it like that. Until now, the families have always asked the Israeli media and the international media, 
not to publish uh, these these uh, videos, so not to play into the hands of Hamas and not to uh, entertain this this uh, game of psychological terror that Hamas is is delivering. Uh, but the families are now desperate, and uh, all means are good as far as the families are concerned, to pressure the Netanyahu government uh, into such a deal, including the publications of uh, these uh, these two uh, videos. And we have seen last night and the night before uh, mass demonstrations, again, of families and people supporting uh, the families, telling essentially Netanyahu and his government that uh, Rafah can wait. If this is really uh, something that Israel must do, to eliminate the forces of uh, of Hamas in Rafah to avoid a second uh, October 7, then this will have to wait. This will have to wait a few months, a year, a few years. The priority must be bringing back the hostages. And we know that within uh, the war cabinet, Minister Benny Gantz, Minister uh, Guy Diazenkot, and probably also Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, all three of them, are supporting a deal, and a deal means suspending uh, an operation in Rafah. Hmm. Okay, um, Rina, I'm sure everyone will be watching this quite closely, mostly yourself. Um, thank you so much for your reporting, and we will stay tuned. Thank you, Kristen. That's it for today, April 30th. You can read all these stories and more impacting the region at allmonitor.com.